I'd heard a lot about Leeds Castle. Many people had said, you have to visit, it's a great day out. And I finally made it. Rode the train to the castle and anticipating the experience, especially on such a nice day. From the train, we strolled through the nice gardens to the gatehouse, already feeling history all around us. It's said that visitors never forget first setting eyes on Leeds Castle. This majestic castle in Kent, in southeast England, seldom fails to impress. A castle with all the trimmings of castles, extensive grounds and gardens, a large moat, portcullis, ramparts and towers. Its history dates back almost 900 years. We entered the castle through the gatehouse and made our way around the perimeter, getting a great view of the moat and also the towers and ramparts. My first question was, why the name? Most people have heard of the city of Leeds in Yorkshire, but few know there's a village called Leeds in Kent, half a mile away from the castle. Next question is, which came first? Does the castle get its name from the village or vice versa? The village appears in the Doomsday Book of 1086 called Eslides, an old English word meaning a slope or hillside. But an alternative explanation for the name is that it derived its name from Lydian who built a wooden fortress here in 978, or perhaps an earlier Saxon chief called Led or Lead, hence the Castle of Lead or Leeds Castle. I think the name comes from the village. In times past, a Norman stronghold bought in 1278 by King Edward I's wife Eleanor of Castile, later transformed by Henry VIII for his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. In fact, no fewer than six medieval queens lived here. The castle is bird friendly and one can enjoy a little bird watching. This is a barnacle goose nesting by the lake. The beautiful black swan is an icon of the Leeds Castle. The new castle was completed in 1823 in the Tudor style and that's the way it remains today. Our first glimpse inside of the cellars. In fact, this Norman cellar is the oldest surviving part of the castle dating back to the early 12th century. One of the rooms has a timeline around its walls, giving a step-by-step -step description of its history, a fascinating glimpse, including many portraits on the walls. Then we explored the interior of the castle, now restored to allow the visitor to see what it would have been like in times past. The Queen's room was fascinating. The bedroom was really a state room. The bed, a status symbol, but used for births and deaths so that there would be witnesses to these occasions. Notice the wall coverings. Actually, not just for decoration, but also to keep out the drafts and help keep the room warm. 
especially the bathroom. Henry VIII's banqueting hall is the largest room in the castle and is exquisitely decorated. It was renovated in 1512 with intricately carved ceiling beams and ebony floor and a large bay window. Heating was always a major consideration in cold and drafty castles. The chapel is also magnificent. It's actually a recreation by the Leeds Castle Foundation of a chapel established by Edward I after the death of Queen Eleanor so that masses could be sung in her memory. We really enjoyed exploring and getting insight into times past and some parts of the castle retain features that date back centuries. We then saw the more recent renovations, the boardroom, the yellow bedroom, formerly part of the private rooms of Catherine of Aragon, the seminar room, and also the dressing room of the last owner, Lady Bailey, who died in 1974. This is her bedroom. And this, the bedroom of her husband, which was, in times past, the bedchamber of Catherine of Aragon. The Leeds Castle Foundation has done an excellent job of renovating the castle and presenting it in such a way that the visitor is able not only to learn much of its past, but also to soak in the atmosphere of its history and enjoy its beauty. The library is amazing. Floor to ceiling books in a bright room ideal for reading and a pastel green dining room. A great visit, but now time to explore the outside. The famous front view of the castle. There's a great shop here. As we walked over to see the gardens, there were some great views of the castle from across the moat. After our historic journey, it's time to enjoy this typical English summer's day. So off we go to the gardens by the lake. There's nothing quite like an English country garden. But Lady Bailey went a step further and added a Mediterranean style garden. A great place to enjoy the views over the lake and some exotic plants. We traveled back to the Middle Ages in the castle and now we were transported geographically to the Med. Or so it felt on this warm summer's day.
And so I leave you with the words of Henry VIII. Pass time with good company, I love and shall until I die. Grudge who list, but none deny. So God be pleased, thus live will I. Next up on Beautiful Britain, a chance to see Ely Cathedral, one of the grandest cathedrals in the world, a work of art in itself, and certainly awe-inspiring. 